As we've covered in previous videos, writing a film is like stealing candy from a giant baby who lives on the surface of the sun. Difficult, basically. Sometimes, either intentionally or not, movies can be left feeling a little unfinished, and the fans take it upon themselves to fill those narrative gaps with the toxic polyfiller of fan theories. Even films which no one thinks are unfinished don't always escape the imaginations of those who can see hidden messages in their serial. And here are some of the strangest, yet oddly satisfying. I'm Adam from WhatCulture.com, and here are nine fan theories that totally change your favourite movies. Number 9. Jack Dawson, Time Traveller Don't let my BAFTA-nominated penis fool you, I really like Titanic. It's epic and exciting and that last shot is f***ing moving. I don't care what any of you think of me, especially you. Dad. Seeing as it was a real historical event, you'd have thought it would prove tricky to create a ludicrous fan theory about it. You'd be wrong, bucko. Some fans online have posited this idea, that Jack Dawson, the king of the world himself, is a time traveller sent back in time to prevent Rose from committing suicide. Me and my father, we went ice fishing out on Lake Wissota. The evidence? Jack makes references to things like Lake Wissota and a roller coaster on Santa Monica Pier that were both built about five years after the ship sank. Drink cheap beer. Right on the roller coaster till we throw up. <laughs> also, his out of style rucksack and boy band hair, the fact that he had to gamble his way onto the ship because he had no money from that time, all could be holes in the script or factual inaccuracies, or maybe Rose's granddaughter ends up being the leader of a revolution against Skynet. Who knows? Number 8. Stan Lee. Watcher. The Watcher is called Uatu and is a gigantic preposterous space baby who wears ancient robes and has a head the size of creation's most portentous Bratz doll. In Marvel continuity, the role of the Watcher is to turn up whenever important shit goes down and, well, watch. Thanks mate, take a picture, it'll last longer. Seriously, every time something big in the universe happens, the Watcher is there to rubberneck. You know who else appears every time something happens in the Marvel Universe? Stan Lee. Always there, always witnessing, but rarely if ever getting directly involved. It all adds up. Stan Lee is a weird cosmic voyeur. You know it just sounds right. Number 7. James Bond is a code name. Ever wonder how James Bond could simultaneously be a calmly psychotic Scot, an Australian model, a straight up sex pest, your dad, and a bulldog designed by Giorgio Armani? Well, how about this theory? Like the signature number, the term James Bond is actually a code name bestowed upon every spy to be designated 007. It would explain why he hasn't aged since the 19th Sixties. Hello. Why is so ludicrously cavalier about telling literally everybody his own name when he's supposed to be undercover? Bond. 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 My name's Bond. My name's Bond. My name is Bond. My name is Bond. Is he? Are you? Yes. And when he dies, the next Oxford-educated lunatic just takes his place and takes his name. This never happened to the other fella. <laughs> Number 6. Sandy's Dying. Grease cemented John Travolta as a megastar, and I shan't forgive it for that. One of the most enduring musicals of all time, the Grease Megamix still finds its way onto DJ playlists in bad nightclubs, bad weddings, and bold funerals. It's something of a giddy teenage fever dream, which makes this fan theory all the more disturbing. Someone out there made a case that none of Grease is actually real. Instead, it's all just a coma dream in Sandy's dying mind. Oh, Jesus. To elaborate, at the beginning of the film, Travolta sings, Saved her life, she nearly drowned. I saved her life, she nearly drowned. What if, says the theory, he didn't save her, and she actually did drown? As her brain is starved of oxygen, oh god, Sandy has a coma dream of her life panning out just as she dreamed, with increasingly outlandish musical numbers because, you know, that's what she loves. In the end, after getting multiplying chills, her and Danny get in the car and drive into the sky, symbolising her being at peace, finally succumbing to the waves, her soul transported to heaven, albeit in a car that is, quote, grease lightning. Number 5. Cobb's Wedding Ring. This one's gained a lot of traction online because it solves that perennial problem, is Cobb dreaming or not at the end of Inception? See, his totem is the spinning top, right? Everyone knows that. Except, what if it's not? After all, the top was Mal's totem, that's probably why he has it, that sentimental attachment. Instead, what if the totem is? his wedding ring. Fans have noticed that Cobb only wears his wedding ring in dreams, but doesn't wear it in reality. They posit that Cobb is so racked with guilt about Mal that his subconscious always has him wearing his wedding ring. Guilt. I feel guilt, Mal. So the lack of it is his marker of reality. Also, you're supposed to keep your totems a tote secret. That way when you look at your totem, you know beyond a doubt that you're not in someone else's dream which Cobbs totes doesn't about the top, whereas the wedding ring, it's kept as a secret, even from the audience. Number four, Andy's mom. This one makes and breaks my heart. There's a theory online that Emily, Jesse's former owner who grew up and abandoned her way back, was actually 
Andy's mum. And all the evidence comes down to a hat. In the first Toy Story, Andy wears a sheriff's hat, but it's different to Woody's. It's red with white string running around the rim. The same hat that Jessie wears. Then we see a flashback to Jessie's owner Emily's room, a child in the 70s, according to a poster on the wall. On her bed is a red cowboy hat. In Toy Story 1, Andy's hat is missing the white ribbon, which could have easily degraded with time, but otherwise they're identical. Andy's mom is old enough to be that girl, passed the hat on to her son, and perhaps never notice that her favorite toy as a little girl finally came home. Number three, E.T. is a Jedi. The more you think about it, the more it makes sense, sort of. You must the force around you, you, between you, me, the tree, the rock, everywhere, yes. Well, maybe not makes total sense, but enough. You. George Lucas and Steve Spielberg are bezzy mates. Everyone knows that, it's cute, and they shouldn't be ashamed of their love. Turns out their films might not just share a universe, but also share a galaxy. In the Star Wars prequels, you can see little E.T. aliens in the Galactic Senate. Then in Spielberg's seminal 80s movie, E.T. recognizes a child dressed as Yoda and says, they're from the same galaxy, which gives the fact that E.T. is able to levitate Elliot's bike a whole new significance. He's a Jedi. Can't wait to see his version of Force Lightning. Number two, the Pixar Theory. One of the most famous fan theories on the internet, the whole mad saga is available at pixartheory.com, but here's it in brief. All of Pixar's movies take place in the same universe. Yep, Monsters Inc., Up, Cars, all one big timeline. The magical events of Brave kick off the whole animals and objects having sentience thing, animals who can talk, staring at road. to breed and having a strange relationship with mankind, doing no small part to stuff like the villain exploiting animals and up. Humans leave Earth before Wally, technology, i.e. cars, take over, then life returns in the form of bugs, which evolve to become monsters who travel in time using doors to find Boo, who then becomes a witch, a witch. who uses doors to travel back to the Dark Ages, create the magic that started everything off. Got it? Did you all get that? I mean, I would speak slower, but I'm not sure that would help it get more sane. <coughs> Number one, the Star Wars bugs. So everyone in the Star Wars movies are bugs. That's a theory anyway, a mental fan theory by Max Gladstone who posits that Star Wars is a reenactment of things that happened, you know, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. They're played by humans in the movies because that's what we would recognize, but they weren't humans when the events actually happened because humans didn't exist. Instead, the theory goes that because of the structure of society in the original trilogy, i.e. lack of much familial attachment, You knew my father? Get it. Young ages of maturity, few females that nevertheless automatically assume authoritarian roles, identical drones, an abundance of huge constructed hives for said drones. That's no moon. They're bugs. Intelligent, hive-based insects. Frankly, I find the idea of a bug that thinks offensive. Yep, that franchise you like, it's all about space bees. Cool. Seems legit. And that's our list. Did we miss any out? Tell us about it in the comments and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. You can follow me on Twitter here. I'm Adam from whatculture.com and I'll see you soon.